I'm renowned for my professionalism uh, as, uh, as an interviewer and normally we keep these chats just strictly to the... What's a financial dominatrix? Oh. Because you yes. look, don't take this the wrong way, like a normal dominatrix. Yes. So it's a blend. So it's, it's I would say, a niche of domination. Uh -huh. uh, except their kink is giving me money for the pleasure of giving me money. Which is great, because as a comedian, I need money. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and by the way, often you don't even ever see your clients, right? Yeah, a lot of what I do is online. A lot of it is like a cam session, or I'll just text them being like, you're paying for dinner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, pretty yeah. amazing. I need rent money. Uh, pay me slave. Yes, except never need. I want. I want. You sound right. like you know about this. Have you ever done uh, it? I, uh, unfortunately, that, that has not become available yet to me. I do financial dominatrix mostly to my parents. All uh, right. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, fine. But, but you've done the escorting thing. Well, so what I've discovered is when I was very, very broke uh, in London, I discovered that I thought maybe I can make some money as an escort. Now, in, in And why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I? Exactly is the answer. So I got in touch with this, this sort of uh, agency. Um, and what I realized is that being an escort is very, very profitable if you're uh, a woman or gay. But if you're a straight escort... There is not much money. In it. Really? Yeah. In fact, if you're a straight escort, um, it's all about building relationships. Oh, God, it's the touchy feely. You have Aye. to build it, you know, have to take it to the theater. Oh, nah, 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 no. Nah, 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 nah. And, uh, and when you're trying, when you decide to do escorting, it's because you need money now. Yeah. yeah this yeah. is not a future endeavor. Yeah. I just, I, I noticed in the, uh, the extensive biog. Uh, that's here in the brochure that it says <laughs> it says you opened for Alan Carr and I, I just was wondering that maybe you did the gay side of things too ah uh, <laughs> yes that, that, that's opened, opened. Yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you know listen um, you do what you have to do uh, in this business to get the gigs yeah. to get the breaks right yeah so and if it's I mean the the it, it the whole, we will obviously talk about your hilarious Edinburgh shows that you have brought here, which nobody should miss in a minute. But quite frankly, these few moments are just for me. Um, the, the whole sex work thing is very different. Even taking um, fetish out of it, mm -hmm. what women want to pay for and what men want to pay for are two very different things and I think it kind of yeah you know it shows what each sex feels it is lacking from what they've got at home women feel that a relationship is lacking men feel that sex is lacking yeah I mean and then there's everything in between like mm. you know um, I have men who are frustrated by their wives taking control over them so then they come to me yeah. and have me take control over them just in a different way yeah in so, a fun way it, in, how did yeah. you get into it um, I did these foot fetish parties and I quickly discovered that I was like, oh, I'm being treated better here. Like I'm being less objectified than if I was like waiting tables. Like I was like, this is yeah. the best I've been treated by a man ever. They're like asking about my boundaries, like being yep. very kind, giving me foot massages and making money off of it. So I was like, I think I found my calling. Yeah, the, the, the whole fetish scene is so well behaved. Yeah, mm. Gen you know? generally. Generally I mean, well now, now that there is the internet, like it's, as you can imagine, it there's opens some it up. There's some underworlds. Yes, there's yeah. so much of like an underbelly to it. Um, so yeah, there is like a lot more spread of awareness, but then there is also just a lot of people that just, you know, aren't, aren't having like face-to-face -face conversations and like learning kind of how, one, like letting go of the shame. It's usually about shame, right? It's usually like yeah. if they're not able to um, communicate well with you or if they're even being disrespectful, it's usually coming from a place of pain. And so it's their own shame stuff that they're kind of like throwing onto you. Now, at the risk of sounding negative, Get for it, which I apologize, this is absolutely fascinating and wonderful, and I want to know more, but it's not making me laugh. So oh. where does the comedy come in? I mean, I have so many wild stories. Um, there is, there's so much, I mean, sex 
is funny. Like sex yeah, inherently correct. is funny and our sexuality is funny. Um, I play a game show called Did I Do That For Money? Where I list just like a bunch of wild things and the contestant has to guess if they think I did it for money or not. Like oh. an example of one is, um, did I saran wrap bread to my feet? Oh. Wow. Can. can I ask you well, a question? Well, no, yes or no? Um, uh, yeah. I'm going to say yes. Yeah, yeah I'm going to say yes. Page, yeah. The answer is yes. They yes. wanted to eat footbread. And, and, and for how much? It's fun. It's funny. <laughs> and how much does that service cost? I mean, it depends. Uh, I mean, that was back in the day, so it was not as much as now. I mean, now in Inflation, general. Inflation, of course. Yeah, Inflation I know. Especially <laughs> bread with a war? Well, I know. Oh, oh I my know. God. Yes. <laughs> but, so, yeah, it varies. No, he wants to know because he's thinking about it now. <laughs> no, okay. I, 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 I have a question. I have my feet in a while because it's that's a whole to do. Yeah. Uh, which is my girlfriend wants to get into selling foot pictures. Okay. Uh, what it, would you advise is the best way for her to go about it? Um, not dealing with people being like, DM me and I'll buy a foot pic. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> those what, are what's, just time what's, wasters. What's a good website? Um, you know, I think OnlyFans is okay, but I actually think um, making clips rather than like photos yeah. is the way to do it and people buy a lot of clip content on I want clips loyal fans um, there's some others too I would say those are I hope you're making clips for sale there. yeah <laughs> everyone take notes um, but yeah making like I do that as well I make uh, clip content and like I make porn and do, do you <laughs> see yourself uh, we'll get to you in a second <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Honestly, um, we don't need to. I'm, 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 I'm not interested in this. It's a fascinating world. Uh, do you see yourself as a, a, a very, you know, a, a sex worker with um, a very varied and profitable, you know, uh, CV who does comedy or a comic who does sex work? I am a comic and my day job is sex work. Would yeah. it freak your clients who ever out if they knew you were a comic? Yeah, so some know, a couple that I'm close with, and some have been finding out. Ah, <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I mean, but, supposing you yeah. end up, you know, headlining Saturday Night Live and whatnot, and they, they see it. Right, exactly. And they go, you can't even see her feet in this shot. <laughs> And I actually don't show my face in all of my content, funny enough, and it still sells. Um, but yes, I mean, I am a, a comedian first, and then I did sex work to help support that. Mm. Um, yeah. Excellent. And you, uh, were you a So I'm a comedian. Mm. Uh, just, just let's get this straight. Yeah. Comedian. Full time uh, now, luckily, for now. We'll see what the future brings. Um, and I, it sort of... And, and my going into that uh, came as a, a sort of desperate move because I'd been working sort of endless job after endless job. I, I worked in bars, I worked in kitchens, I worked in every single thing that every European who moves to England does. Um, and then I even sold paintball tickets on the street commission Whoa. only. Oh, that's hard. Because I mean, the, I think maybe one of your problems is other Europeans have a very definite, like we all know what an American is. We all know the French, the Italian, Portuguese, not so much. I mean, you don't get That's an right. immediate. There's no stereotypes. No. Yes. No. Are you finding that a problem in comedy? I am fine. Yes, <laughs> I am. You're the first person who's asked me this. And thank you for asking this because the greatest challenge of being a Portuguese uh, comedian is that there are in fact no stereotypes. Yeah. People know nothing about Portugal. So one of the, I think one of the great advantages that say American comics and English comics, for example, have is that the whole world is somewhat attuned to what's happening there. They know the culture, they know yep. the, the, the people, they know what's going on. So there's not much explanation needed. So. In my show, I was sort of like, how do I explain Portugal? How do I explain the mindset of a people? Because in order to understand me, you have to understand where I come from. But if you know nothing about where I come from, how do I tell you that in five minutes and be funny? Yeah. So, so I think that's one of the... And how do you? Well, you have to come <laughs> see the show and find out. Aha. Uh -huh. Because the only thing I know about Portugal really is port, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yes. And motorbike racing. Motorbike racing. You have a phenomenal racing circuit. 
Wow, we have we do have a, a a guy out there that's actually doing very well for the for the for the Portuguese in motorbiking. Uh, there's many things. Portugal and England um, are the world's oldest allies. For example. Really? Yeah. And we're not bored with each other yet. You're keeping it alive. Well, you did kick us out, so there must be some yeah. tension. So the so your show's interactive, but yes. not not in a fetishy way. And let, sort can, of. I, I do teach someone in the audience how to do FinDom, and let's just say real money might get involved. Whoa. So someone can maybe walk out a little bit richer than they came in. Honestly, okay, so I'm sorry, as you're a, selling as, me the show. I, know. I want to. I okay, want okay, to. just go up against that. Yeah. You can go to her show, laugh yourself pissy, and uh, learn to be a FinDom. Yeah. Go up a little money. Top that. Uh, yes. Uh, so, well... By, by, the, by the way, what time is your show and where is it? Yes, it's, because um, I, yeah, please come. It's 2.25 p.m. at Underbelly in Bristow Square. Domination in the afternoon. Yeah, 2.25 p.m. for Domination. Yeah, so you are you going to go? You come out of, I am going to go. Oh, honey, I do it at 8 a.m. Like, it is, I'm on all time zones. Wow. I'm on, like, you wow. never know when someone So, come on. Up. Well, my <laughs> show is perhaps not so involving of the financial <laughs> dominatrix. But my show really is about, um, it's about staying optimistic when life gives you no reasons to. I think throughout all my years in trying to, to be a comedian, uh, I've worked all of these jobs. I've, I've gone through all of these journeys yeah. in order to try to do this. And uh, as, as we all know, it, it is hard. It is a privilege to, to earn money for telling jokes. And it is hard earned. And uh, I think from going to America, to London, to failing, to working all these shit jobs, to... So, oh, sorry, no, can you're I... T- fuck sake, of course you're that. Okay. Um, <laughs> through all of these things, uh, kind of been traveling the world uh, by myself, doing all of this. And I think it's sort of an autobiographical show about the wild journey that it's been for me to, to, to get to the point where I, I can even say hey, I do this now, and hopefully it's only now, the Now, you see, there is, there is a USP, if you like, a nice guy doing comedy in Edinburgh. I tell you, mm. if you just left your phone number out there at the... Where is it? What's your venue? Pleasance Bunker 2. Pleasance Bunker 2. Just a little thing with your phone number in there. You'd get all kinds of older ladies wanting to take you home and mother you. Oh, I'm yeah. Sure. Well, you know, that's... that's <laughs> <laughs> the, the, <laughs> and for the certain price, well, I actually... Yeah. Uh, I because act- you seem like such a love, doesn't he seem? Yes, d- very lovely. Uh, so <laughs> lovely. But also not if that's what the job requires, okay? okay? Yes. Uh, also a cold so, heart bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and at the end of the show, just a little bit, th- there are uh, the fees. The one hour fee, the three hour fee. Yeah. The dinner and the overnight fees, so so they yeah. all stand there. So yeah. as a little as a little uh, as a little treat for the audience. So somebody could come along to your show, learn a bit of doming, uh-huh. and then come and come see a fail. Yeah. And then you could you could, you could come see a successful uh, a successful sex worker, and then you can come see what the failed version of that is like. <laughs> Well, I, I think I've got an entire day planned out for myself. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> well, 2.25. <laughs> yep. I'm at 8. There you so. go. Yeah. You start with me, you, you end see, with that's you. It. We, we've already programmed a day for anyone out there who's into good comedy, good times, good-looking people. God, I, I, I risk a ghastly double entendre here, but when do you open? Oh. oh. Well, uh, when do you close? Oh, uh. Uh, every day. <laughs> I mean, as a dom, like, it's all yeah. about boundaries. And yeah. actually, that's a, a huge theme with my show is, is about learning boundaries and about, um, as a sex worker, it actually really taught me a lot about boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of my show is about the fantasy and the reality and the juxtaposition of that. And there's so much comedy in that. Like, of being course. this goofy, like, improv and sketch comedian who then is like, hello, I'm going to take $1,000 from you. It's yeah. just, it's hilarious. And then to go back and like do an improv set to be like, I'm a dumb pirate who is afraid of parrots. Like, it's just like so silly mm-hmm. to have all of that. What was the, the, the sort of, the first time, 
Okay. Do you, do you do uh, do you do have you done in person dominatrix? I have, yeah, I have done some. I do well, these ATM cash meets. You'll le learn about it at the show. Whoa. ATM cash meets. I meet them at the ATM. They put in their pin and their card, and they step to the side, and I take over and I take what I want. I need to know more about this, but we don't have time. <laughs> yes, I have. Sorry. I had okay. a friend. I have a friend who's <laughs> into financial show, dominatrix. Friend, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, so we need to. We need to uh, apart from anything else. Yes. I'm. I'm going deep now. I'm going in deep, and uh, so just.